That smoke definitely showing up on the satellite imagery in Western Canada, large plume across Alberta itself, and new wildfires in Saskatchewan. 92 wildfires were burning in Alberta today, 26 in Saskatchewan, and 10,000 people are displaced. And there's also our climate indexes. Here's how things are looking. A strong NAO pattern, currently highly positive, which indicates fast flow across the Atlantic. And the AO, which is the annular mode, the Arctic Oscillation, is highly positive, indicating a strong polar vortex. The El Nino, that's our slowest moving indicator. That's neutral, but it is moving strongly to the left, indicating El Nino conditions. And Manajulian Oscillation in Phase 6. And we talked a bit about that last week. Here's the surface analysis this afternoon. A lot of that smoke has made it all the way down to Colorado, to Cheyenne, and almost to Denver. Further north, yep, plenty of smoke all the way up there in Montana, and you can see the extent of it in western Canada. The strong wildfires in Saskatchewan, others in northwestern Alberta. Back down here in the U.S., we've got that push of cold air coming from the northern plains. Temperatures down in the 50s and some very cool temperatures aloft right here over Iowa, Wisconsin, looking at below zero up at 850 millibars. And we've got this thermal trough indicated by the curvature of the thickness contours. So that is cold air on its way southeast. A transitional air mass in the eastern U.S., 60s and 70s, some of that feeding from the northeast into Atlanta, and the Carolinas, and the main frontal boundary located across Florida. Further to the west, we have this active cold front just north of Dallas. Cold air pushing down through the panhandles, some unseasonably cold air up there in the panhandles, and the triple point extending from about Sweetwater down to the Serrano del Burroughs, where we have thunderstorms, and those will come together later tonight and push out into an MCS in South Texas. Further out west, not much going on in California, but in the higher terrain of the Arizona deserts, up there into the Four Corners area, numerous showers and storms. And there's the tail end of that polar front. Let's head up to Alaska. We've got a very warm day in the interior. 65 when we did this map, but it's already up above 70 at Fairbanks, and Whitehorse also up to 70. But some cool air, ironically, coming from the south that has spun around this deep low and has made it into the coastal areas of Alaska. Further out to the east, cool air, snow still hanging on across the Canadian high Arctic. Some of that cold air is infecting the south. You can see the freezing line right there through, I think that's uh, Baker Lake up towards Great Slave Lake and up to Inuvik. And further to the east, let's take a look there. Northwesterly flow, cold air advection into Quebec. And that's what we're looking at for this afternoon. Warm temperatures all the way up towards Montreal. Taking a closer look at the northeastern U.S. frontal boundary through Lake Huron down to Michigan and northern Indiana. Some showers and a few storms along that boundary. Temperatures out ahead of it in the 70s and a few 60s out there. SPC general risk along that front. The surface map showing nothing all that notable. The area is under southerly flow, the ridge well out to the east and the front located right in there. The southeastern U.S. cloudy with that northeasterly flow in place. One wave moving along the North Carolina coast, some heavy rain along that, and some of the estimates were indicating the potential for up to seven inches of rain along the Cape Fear area. Precipitable water amounts are near record values there in North Carolina. There's the precipitable water at Wilmington, North Carolina. That flashing dot there indicating 1.72 inches of precipitable water, very close to the record for the date. 
In the south central U.S., we have storms developing in the Lake Texoma region, the Red River area, and down to the Dallas Fort Worth area. More storms out in the Serrano Del Burroughs west of Del Rio. And you can see that long anvil. So we're definitely picking up some subtropical jet energy, very likely subtropical jet running like that. You can see that the anvils are not quite as stretched further north. And that reflects the slightly stronger flow down to the south. Looking at the radar, and we will update this in a bit, just kind of a disorganized mess of storms through Dallas, down to Addison, Farmers Branch, Arlington, and down to Cleburne. Doesn't look like any of them are really that well developed. A few more cells further to the southwest, those don't look very impressive either. Let's take a look at the high resolution rapid refresh and see what the problem is. So there's the graphics for right now. We're going to go to the Theta E to make sure we get the best possible air mass. Now, the storms are right through here. It looks like the air mass is not that great out ahead of them. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and grab this moisture axis right there. And we'll take a look. So what this indicates is maybe some moisture problems. Looks like some of that residual dry air just off the surface is interfering a bit. Also, the wind flow is not that strong. You can see the 0 through 6 kilometer profile only stretched out to about 25 knots. There is some anvil level shear, but just not much going on in the low and mid levels. However, we do have the cape, and another issue is probably going to be this LCL. This could be better. We're only seeing about 1.5. And generally, when you're getting up above 1.5 to 2 kilometers, you're dealing with high-based storms. So we'll return to this shortly before we set up the upload. Let's head up north. We start out at around 11 o'clock last night, MCS moving through the panhandles, pretty much from north of Lubbock up to Garden City, a little MCV tracking from Woodward up to Wichita. Anyway, that moves eastward and decays as we get into the morning hours and bringing that up to the midday and current times, not a whole lot left. Most of what we see here is precipitation along the cold front. Now, typically we follow those boundaries that these MCSs lay down because those can factor into convection the next day. However, this particular event, what it did was basically reinforce the cold front. And as a result, we see this cold, blustery weather across northwestern Oklahoma and the Panhandles. Temperatures only in the 50s at Amarillo, Gage, and Wichita. However, out there in the Great Lakes, you can see the spin in this upper level low in northern Wisconsin. So cold air in the mid-levels, as we mentioned, below zero Celsius at 850 millibars. And we're looking for a frost advisory tonight in north central Wisconsin. It's going to be quite cold. Lots of 30s tonight through the northern plains and 40s all the way down towards Kansas. In the southwestern U.S., numerous showers and storms in the higher elevations, so this is very much like an early monsoon. Those showers extend all the way up to the Interstate 70 corridor, up to Bryce Canyon, and back down towards the Mogollon Rim. We do have flood watches continuing out there in the Reno area, Hawthorne, Mammoth Lakes, Tahoe, and Truckee, for snowmelt flooding. It's been kind of a record year as far as snow cover, and we do see the snow in the mountains on the satellite imagery. And looking pretty clear up there in the northwestern U.S., lots of smoke, especially up there in Montana, and it kind of thins out as you get down towards Cheyenne and Salt Lake City. We are looking for a very warm weekend in the northwest, especially around Yakima, Pasco, and Spokane. Temperatures will be well above 90 degrees there. And with that warm air mass in place, there will be heavy snow melt in the higher elevations of the Rockies. You can see there is still some snow there, and that will contribute to heavy runoff in the creeks and tributaries there. So let's take a look at the forecast for this weekend, starting out this evening. There's that big ridge, high pressure across the Sierra Nevadas, and the troughing in the 
western Great Lakes area. That's associated with those cold temperatures, zero at 850 and minus 24 at 500 millibars. So that's going to be some very steep lapse rates. But then going into tomorrow, this is how it looks around the afternoon hours. Ridging continuing out west. The troughing moves into the Michigan and lower Ontario area. And the NAM forecast showing that big high in the northern plains. A front, a polar front from New York down to Mississippi and the Texas Gulf Coast. And it looks like a warm front somewhere in here. So cold air advection, there's that upper level cold pocket, and that will connect into that 700 and 500 millibar low aloft. And we can see more showers and storms breaking out in the Four Corners area. And as we go into the afternoon and evening, you can see these showers progressing from west to east into Virginia and New York, and showers all the way down towards Alabama. And it looks like some very wet conditions in the Rio Grande Valley. Then going into Sunday, not really any big changes. The big high pressure area, which was formerly in Nebraska, moves into Illinois. So a very slow drift over 24 hours. The Great Plains starts becoming under southerly flow once again. You can see some mid-level clouds spreading northward along the Interstate 35 corridor. And the heat starts to abate a little bit. Looks like some cool high pressure starting to move into the northwestern U.S. Boise will be up to 90 degrees on Sunday, and there will be some warm weather continuing back towards Salt Lake City and Winnemucca. And it looks wet for the Carolinas and Georgia. Some onshore flow there. And the pattern continues going into Monday. And we start seeing some changes in the upper levels as that cold air advects into the northwestern U.S. And we see a major pattern shift going from Saturday into Sunday and Monday. Strong troughing in Washington. This is going to be Monday morning. So that's definitely going to spell a cool down for Spokane and Yakima. Strong westerlies into the Portland area. Now, this is where the models get a little bit iffy going into Tuesday and Wednesday. The GFS carries a big cutoff flow down towards California. And then by Thursday. Look how unsettled it looks there in California. That's definitely a cool, rainy pattern. The same chart on the ECMWF looking a little bit different. There's the first wave on Monday. That tracks pretty well with the GFS, but wave two is handled a little bit differently. This forms a little bit of a dumbbell shape there. Now the GFS took that second part down into California. The ECMWF not quite doing that, going much slower. It does put California under some northwesterly flow, which will moderate things a little bit. But the European model not going quite as severe with the effects there in California. In fact, it goes under some ridging going into Thursday and Friday, but then it brings a little cutoff flow into the Southern California area. So which one is right? Well, we'll see. We'll let them duke it out. And we see another change out in the southeastern U.S. You can see the GFS going for some troughing in the southeastern states. It even breaks out this 576 millibar low. And that always means kind of a rainy pattern because you can see there at 500 millibars, temperatures are minus 12, which sets up some steep lapse rates. However, the European model is actually going for a similar situation, maybe not quite so strong. So it looks like rain if you're out there in the eastern, southeastern states. And if you're in Texas, I'm not too sure that that looks all that great. Ridging and warm weather. And the ECMWF does tend to agree. So as we get ready to wrap this up, looking at the radar, not really all that impressive. A couple of severe thunderstorm warnings in the Washita Mountains of southeastern Oklahoma and out towards southwestern Arkansas. The stuff in the Dallas-Fort Worth area doesn't really look all that great. Let me get rid of some of these really thick roads. Yeah, that shows you a little bit better. Just kind of a disorganized complex of cells from Greenville down to Dallas, south of Fort Worth, and all the way down towards Meridian. And it looks like some stronger stuff out in the distance towards Brady. 
So this will give you the play-by-play -play on AWIPS. This is the same system used by the National Weather Service, and they're looking at some of these graphics. Now this is a little bit of a messy presentation. I've got the reflectivity. That's going to be these splotches right there across Dallas. And I've got these red and orange fields. That's the theta E, and that kind of shows me where the best fuel is for these storms. It looks like there's a lot of dry air out ahead of these storm cells. So that's going to be a problem. But we can put this into motion and look at things during the evening. The storms are trying to feed right there on that theta E axis and also right along that boundary. You can see that moving north to south. There's that wind field and that's where the winds are converging right there along that front. Now this might help you out a little bit. Now you can see the cells a little bit better. They do increase going into the evening. But I do want to see where that fuel is, so I'm going to put that back. Sorry about that. We do see that there is probably some theta E advection with that meager southerly flow. Then going into the evening hours, kind of a large complex developing south of Dallas. And looks like it fizzles out, kind of moves towards Corsicana and Palestine. Another MCS further up to the north near Texarkana. Let me go back just a little bit. To about 10 p.m. So it's looking pretty good there between Little Rock and Texarkana, one strong cell, about Arkadelphia. We are kind of picking out details that may not be there. But that kind of shows you the general idea, little MCS moving through Arkansas. Not much in North Texas, but round two develops in this area right here. We see that come together overnight. See that large outflow driven MCS? feeding off that rich moisture axis there. San Antonio located right here. So some of that will reach the city. It doesn't look like a whole lot coming into the metro area. Most of the stronger stuff back towards Del Rio and Eagle Pass. And then we can see the cool air filtering back in behind very low theta E values, which means cool, dry air. And that will do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Time to get this rendered and uploaded. The rendering process takes about nine minutes and the upload about 45 seconds. So we are running on a much faster schedule. In closing, I want to thank the kind people who helped to support this program. People like Zachary Bennett, Anna Cake, Harvey Chevalu, Mike Lammers, Philip Slack, Angel Suarez, James Taylor, thank you very much for your support. That's what prioritizes time and attention on this project, and I always appreciate it. In closing, here's some video taken around San Antonio yesterday. Thanks very much to Greg for this footage. It's always more scenic when it gets to be springtime, and those colors really start coming out. We'll see everybody back here on Monday, at least uh, the supporters will see you back here on Monday, and on Wednesday for everybody else. Hope you have a great weekend. Bye-bye.